So if you're still watching, this is uh, part two of making your own picks. Uh, in, this, uh, in this one we're going to be talking about the design and layout as we get ready to start actually making the picks themselves. So I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, metal selection. Uh, the first metal that we talked about in, in the earlier module was hacksaw blades. And these are high carbon steel. Unfortunately they're brittle. They will work. But uh, as we start thinning these shafts down and we start putting stresses on them by picking the locks, a lot of times these hacksaw blades are going to deform or they're going to snap. And unfortunately they usually snap inside of the lock. So we have to find a way to get them out. So for that reason, I kind of discourage using hacksaw blades. Uh, I've got nothing against the industry. I mean, I use these all the time. But if you're going to put a lot of time, a lot of energy into designing, laying these things out and cutting them, final finishing, polishing them to a high to high shine, it just seems you want to use the highest quality material that you can. So that for that reason, unless you absolutely have to use hacksaw blades, I like to avoid them. The next metal that uh, I think you should consider is the high carbon steel. This came out of the... Uh, the sewer or the sink snake, the, the drain cleaner rod came in a 25 foot roll. This is just a small section that I cut off. And this comes out, it's the perfect diameter for a pick. Uh, a lot of the commercial picks are made from high carbon content steel. This is very durable. It doesn't bend very easily. It doesn't snap, uh, at least very easily. Uh, and it holds its form when we're trying to pick it under, under some pretty severe stresses. So I use this a lot, particularly when I buy it in the feeler gauge version. The disadvantage, the only disadvantage I can think of in using the, the sewer snake or the sewer cleaner uh, 25 foot roll is the thickness. There's only one thickness uh, that we have an option of and that's about 30 thousandth of an inch, give or take a thousandth. So if you need a nice thick pick, this is an excellent choice. The other choices you see here, and these are the uh, Eastern Industries feeler gauges that I bought. I think they barely fit into the frame. And I, I'm going to be making three picks as we continue through all of these other, um, I guess, chapters or parts of pick making. I'm going to be making the same hook. I'm going to be making it out of 15 thousandths, 26 thousandths, and 31 thousandths. Then the reason I'm doing that is because I pick a variety of locks and I like the same shape of hook. So I found a hook that I really like. I'm just going to copy uh, the shape of it and I'm, I'm going to duplicate it. Basically take a metal Xerox of it. And that's what we're going to be working on. So how do you decide? Well, the way you decide on your shape is you go on the internet and you can find these templates. Now unfortunately these templates are not always to scale. In other words, when I print this out, it prints out the whole width of the page. So the whole thing is about eight inches long. So uh, I think you need to put a little, little scaling effort into it to scale it down. And ideally, let me get my ruler up here. Ideally your pick should only be about four to four, um, four and a quarter to four and a half inches long. And that's not really that important. What is important is the length of the shaft of the pick itself. The handle just should fit your hand. So that's what you should be shooting for. So as long as you really watch the length of the pick tip, then you can cut the length of the handle whatever you want in order to fit it. So scale this down to, what, to the length of the pick tip. Don't worry about the handle. Another thing you can do, I, uh, I don't use those so much, but I take my own picks that, I, that I've made and I really like them. And once I find something I really like, I lose them, people steal them, you know, I leave them laying around. I, I do bend them and occasionally even break them. So if I find this, a shape that I like, what I'll do is I'll, I'll digitally scan it or you can Xerox it. And the beauty of that, when you Xerox it, it's the exact dimension, so it's easy to copy from that point forward. So it's also easy to trade. If somebody wants a copy of your pick, you simply send them a Xerox or send them the digital scan. You can cut this out and use it as a template if and after you uh, lose or break your old picks. Uh, one more thing. I, I probably should point this out uh, on one of my picks. Again, this is just a tip. When I make a pick, I, as I said, I'm going to make three of them here. They're all going to be virtually identical. What I'll always do is engrave on both sides the, the width of the material that I make it out of. And that way, when I go into my pick set and I need a really thin one, I don't have to paw through three or four identical picks looking for the thinnest one. I just look at the side and I know exactly what it is. So just a tip. Okay, so what do you need? How are we going to lay this out? Well, there's the complex way, and then there's the easy way. So let's first talk about the complex way, because I know I have some German listeners, and they'll appreciate that. 
The first thing we do is we clean the metal with some kind of alcohol cleaner. I use brake parts cleaner, but anything to strip off, because when your manufacturer sends these, they have a light coat of oil to prevent them from rusting or, or oxidizing. So clean that off so that all of your material will stick to it, your magic marker, or this is called Dicom. It's a steel blue material, it costs $3.50 at Home Depot. And you simply paint it on your clean surface and it bonds to it very well. And then you can mark, here you see, I'm, I hope you can see the layout, let me see if I can get it to focus. You see the layout of the pick that we're going to, at least I'm going to be copying. Now, um, when you mark it, the, what I, you'll need is some kind of etcher. And this is a carbide tipped awl, or AWL. And so what you do, you take the pick that you like, you lay it on there, and then not only do you scrape into the dicum to show that fine line, but your, the tip of the carbide is so sharp it's actually etching into the metal. So as we begin to work on this and the dicum gets rubbed off, uh, we can still see the etch marks. Well, there's no reason to spend $3.50. Uh, if you have one of these, it's the same thing. You simply paint your material with black magic marker, permanent marker, and then hopefully we can get this to show up. You can see that the etch shows up again perfectly. So you don't need the dicum, you can just use a mark slot magic marker to paint your material. And you know what? You really don't even have to do that. Sometimes that's a little bit hard to see. And if you like the contrast, as I do, I will normally etch it with, with my awl. I'll scratch the outline. And then once I've done that, I'll use a sharp tipped, a small diameter sharpie to, to outline it uh, so that I can see it when I'm grinding. So the black magic marker from the fine tip will actually go down into the scratches that you made with the awl. So it's really hard to rub this off. It'll stay on there throughout the duration of the cutting process. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, the uh, design a little bit. When we make a pick, there's some things that you need to take into consideration. Uh, the first, of course, is the length of the pick itself, the length of the blade. I don't care about the handle. What we care about uh, when we design is the, the length, because we want it durable. We don't want our pick tips breaking off or bending or deforming. So if we put some thought into it up front, we can, we can maybe save ourselves a lot of trouble. The way I do it is I look at the locks that I'm going to be picking, or at least the longest lock. So in this case, I have a best lock, which is seven pins. So I'll put the pick up there, and I'll see how far into the keyway I need to go to get to the last pin. And in this case, you can see it reaches the tip perfectly. And then I simply add one quarter of an inch. And that gives me some room to stick it all the way into the keyway and still have reached the last pin and still have a little bit of room to play around in case there's some side sidebars or something I need to manipulate. I don't want it shoved all the way in because then I got no room to work. So that extra quarter inch is what I'm after. Are there reasons to make picks longer? Yes, there are. You may, and again, forget the brand here, they have a little bit extra long and it reaches way back into the keyway. There may be reasons. Maybe there are detents in the back of the locks that you work in. Maybe there are deep sidebars or little wheels in the bottom that you need to activate and you need to work at a very steep angle in order to do that. In that case, there may be a reason you want to make it a little bit longer. When we make the picks, we need to really pay attention to the thickness in this dimension. Obviously, the, the thinner it's going to be, the easier it's going to bend. The longer it is and the thinner it is, the less feedback you're going to get. It's going to de-amplify that feedback. So, if you want to make the perfect pick, you want, or actually the definition of a perfect pick is one with the thickest possible, in other words, the tallest dimension possible, and the shortest length. And that will give you the maximum amount of feedback, feedback and the maximum amount of durability. So if you're going to be picking high security locks with very deep keyways, you might be stuck using something like this. In other words, you have to be careful not to bend it. If you're going to be picking master locks, which only have four pins, you can get away with a much smaller shaft and much thicker because that's a big keyway. So put some thought into that. A third thing you might want to think about, again, this is a little bit difficult to show here. I'm trying not to show the manufacturer because it's irrelevant. A lot of them do it. You can have a shaft that's the same dimension along the entire length, 
but of course that's going to be flexy. It's going to it's going to be a lot of give vertically. And one of the ways that you can reinforce that is to make the last bit, the part that stays out of the keyway, a little bit thicker. In this case, it's almost three times, two and a half times as thick as the shaft, and that will add support vertically, so that it will give you more of the feedback and it'll provide a lot more strength along the entire length of the pick. So these are all design considerations. Design, decide that before you start cutting uh, and you'll be fine. Okay, uh, I think that pretty well covers material and design. Uh, thank you for your time. The next module, by the way, we're going to be talking about rough shaping because we've got everything laid out. Now we're going to start cutting it. So thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe, stay legal, and see you on the next part.